What's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to our next lesson in the C++ series. In this lesson we're going to be talking about heap memory and how we obtain memory from the heap using new and how we remove memory from the heap using delete. So this is one part of C++ that makes it a powerful language but also a language that takes just a little bit more care for how we program things because we get to manage our memory. So sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing, but when it comes to performance, it's usually a good thing that we have this level of control over our language. Now, there are some caveats with how you want to allocate memory using new and delete, how often, and so on, especially if you're a game programmer and watching this for performance reasons. But for today's lesson, we just want to focus on what new and delete are actually doing. For C programmers, this will be very familiar if you've used malloc and free. It's the exact same idea with just a little bit few different syntax things that we have to take care of. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the lesson here. So what I first want to do is just take a look at cppreference.com, go into the search box and hit new. And let's go ahead and look at the new expression here. I'll make it a little bit bigger so that you can see. And we have this operator here that allows us to create and initialize objects with dynamic storage duration. And that is objects whose lifetime is not necessarily limited by the scope in which they were created. So if you've been following along with this series, then you're well aware that whenever we have some code here, and I'll just create a new CPP file, within the curly braces, that is usually where the scope, if I create some variable here, x will not live beyond this scope. So x is not available here. It's automatically reclaimed or it's local storage with this scope. We call this the block scope. The other way that we've been talking about this type of program here is that this is part of stack memory. So what does that mean exactly on the stack versus the heap, for instance. Well, for that, let's go ahead to the drawing board here and let me just give you a reminder. So usually we like to think of or we represent our programs in sort of a sort of block structure. So we have this sort of uh, stack here or our program block. Some of it's the actual code in our program. Some of it's other storage, usually static memory, some things that we have to talk about here. I'm just going to call it storage. It could be read-only storage or data that's been initialized, globals, and so on. And at the top, we have our stack memory, which is growing down. So this is where memory is being allocated when you have function arguments or just the local scope. And then this section here is our heap memory. And what basically that means is we point to a giant section of our working memory that is our ram here so i can draw that as an array here or i could also perhaps visualize it as a really large grid if that's easier where we have lots of pieces of memory where each of these little boxes is memory so what happens then is if we want to allocate some of this memory here say for an integer i'll write something like this int and i'm going to put a star here x equals new integer and this pointer here is important so why we've learned about pointers because of this new here and new essentially is allocating memory in this heap here so four boxes usually for a pointer and then because this is a uh, pointer here uh, stores the address of this first piece of memory here, each of these four boxes, the four bytes. And likewise, I can use delete and the variable x here, and that will erase all of this memory here so that some other part of our program or another process running our machine can have access to that memory. Because of course, if we just allocate infinite memory, well, we'll run out, our machines are finite. So anyway, that's the sort of idea with the heap. Now it's important to realize that we must use new and delete together. That is, this memory here will not be reclaimed once I've allocated it unless I had explicitly called delete here. And that is when the actual memory is free. So again, that's the power given to us in C++ that we can control when data is allocated or unallocated or another ways we could say 
when we use new, we have to use delete to reclaim some resource. Okay, let's go ahead and look at an example and type something up. So for this one, I'm just going to go ahead and create a main here. And let's go ahead and just allocate some memory here. So let's go ahead and do the example. So x equals new integer. So I'm putting the actual type here. And then I'll delete x here. So let's go ahead and just compile and run this program. This is main, and I'll just output it as prog. And likewise, it runs just as it needs to. Now, again, why is this really interesting or powerful? Well, again, the memory is not deleted until we actually call delete here. So let me actually try to change some of our rules with the scope here. And in this case, I'm just going to write a function called allocate memory here. And what this is going to do is return a pointer here, and I'll return a new integer. So let's go ahead and do this instead. And I'll rerun the program, and it'll do the same thing. We don't have any uh, great outputs here, uh, I suppose, but I'll fix that in a moment. But now the idea is that within this function, we were allocating some memory and we could return that memory somewhere else. And often you'll see this happen in C code as well as uh, in C++ code. And what I'm trying to demonstrate here is that the scoping rules start to matter because, well, I've allocated memory in a different block scope. Okay. Now, let me get to perhaps the more interesting use case of why we care about heap memory. So let's go ahead and create an array like I would, and I'm just going to call this student IDs. And let's say I have 100 students here. So I'll go ahead and clear this up. And for this example, let's go ahead and give ourselves uh, IO stream here. And for this example, I'm just going to write a simple loop here to populate these student IDs um, with some value here, i equals, say, i. Okay, now what happens if, when I'm running the program, if I actually wanted 200 students? Well, how would I figure out or allocate 200 students here? The answer is you can't because, well, in order to run this program, I've compiled it and we've only allocated enough integers for 100 students. So this is why we need new and delete so we can allocate at runtime so that's an important enough bullet i want to put a star here and say allows us to allocate resources at runtime and when we do this, then we return that allocated resource to a pointer. So another reason that we need pointers. So that resource is returned to us in a pointer. OK, so if we actually look at the CPP reference, we'll go ahead and see that, well, what is return from new here, the actual uh, operator is some object. And you can read about it in the explanation for what's going on. This is going to especially be important once we start building our different uh, data types. So I just want to give you a little bit of context. OK, so how are we going to fix this problem here uh, in our previous example of just being able to allocate any number of students? OK, let's go ahead and fix up this example here. And what I'm going to do is first just say how many students in our class. And I'll ask that as a question with an end line. And then we'll read in some input. You can do that with the C input function here. And I'll just say um, number of students. So I'll have a variable. It's always good to initialize our variables, even if we don't know the initial amount. And then, well, again, let me try this code here and just see if the compiler allows this. So if we don't have the heat memory and dynamic memory allocation. Now, it might actually run this. And let's just put a really big number. Maybe we get a segmentation fault. Um, maybe we don't in some cases. And in this case, we might have just lucked out with however big our stack is. 
In fact, I'm curious to just run this a few times and we'll keep getting segmentation faults. So let's say if we have, uh, what is this, 100 million students, that's just going to crash here. I'll talk about why it doesn't crash perhaps in the comments below if you'd like to ask. Uh, in this particular example, it's a little bit uh, interesting beyond this lesson. Um, but let's go ahead and fix this example. So instead, what we're going to do for our student IDs is just say student IDs equals new integers and then how many of them that we need here. So let's go ahead and run this time and I'll run our program. And well, last time we saw 100 million uh, seem to break our program. So this time, no problem because we're able to at runtime just allocate or ask our system for how many resources we need. That is how many integers or how many bytes of information. And that's what new returns to us here. Okay, now there is a problem with this program though. And can anyone spot it? Well, the issue is here that I've asked for, in this case, some number of students, and that can vary every time I run the program since I'm allocating the memory when the program runs, but I do need to delete the students. And in order to do that, since we've allocated an array or 100 million or a billion or however many students we decide, we call it delete, but with the brackets after it. And that will delete the entirety of the array that we have allocated here. So it is important that we delete all of our elements. So let me go ahead and just run this program and uh, we'll see that it runs here. Now it's a little bit hard for us to tell if this program is actually working. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a little um, trick here by uh, opening up uh, a program called Valgren that can debug memory here. So let me go ahead and run this through Valgren and I'll have a thousand uh, students in our class and Valgren will tell me that throughout the duration of our program, if we have freed all of our heap memory here. So let me go ahead and show you what happens if I don't uh, free our thousand students here. So I'll recompile this. Uh, let me rerun this uh, in our uh, Valgren window. Let's have a thousand students again. And this time you'll see that we have lost 4,000 bytes of information. So if we have a program that's running forever, 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 uh, like a server, Google, a uh, video game, we're essentially just leaking memory and hogging it in some resource. Uh, we should return it when we're done. Okay, so perhaps in a future lesson, or you can check out some of my other essential skills videos, we'll talk more about some of the pitfalls of what can happen with memory allocation or forgetting to free your memory here. But for now, this is a good enough introduction to dynamic memory allocation here. So let me go ahead and leave the working program here. So just to recap, we now know there is something called heap memory where we can allocate while our program's running as many resources as we need or for at least as many that were available to grab from our machine. And we know that we also have to manage this memory ourselves. So that means when we allocate memory, we also have to delete or free that memory. In C++, we use new and delete, and when we're deleting an array of data, we have to use the brackets. If we just have one integer, and I'll just go ahead and show that here, let's just say I have some uh, integer uh, y, then I can just use a single uh, delete as such, and this will be fine. But if I have an array, again, I need to use these brackets here indicating that I want to delete the whole entirety of the array here. Okay, folks. That's it for this lesson. Now you know a little bit about the new and delete operators, why we should use them, why they're necessary to give us resources while our program is running, and why we had to learn about pointers first, because we need to return the start of, well, whatever that collection of memory is that we've allocated for. So pointers, again, very handy in our language. All right, so in the next couple lessons, we're going to start talking about some more usages of pointers, arrays, how we pass arrays into functions. And eventually we're building ourselves up to some cool stuff like building our own data structures uh, and data types in future lessons. So if you don't wanna miss out on any of those lessons, well, you've heard this a million times from me before, but it always helps if you like and subscribe. So 
If you choose to do that, it's much appreciated. And as always, otherwise, we'll see you in the next videos. Thanks for your time, folks.